Hello and welcome to iNerdius and the It's the Song tag. I wasn't actually tagged by anybody, but I watched um, MJ talk about this on Reading This Life and noticed that Criminali, I think, also has a video about this and I'll be watching that here in a little bit. And I thought, well, let me just go ahead and uh, give it a shot myself uh, without being tagged. I hope that's not uh, breaking the rules or anything. Um, I'll just start going through them. So name a song that always makes you happy. I would say that uh, the song that always makes me happy when I, uh, well, I don't really have, the, I don't listen to the radio. So when I, I usually call up songs on um, uh, that are videos on YouTube and just listen to them on my phone these days, um, not the most optimal uh, listening experience, but it works pretty well for me right now. So I would say that um, the song that always makes me happy when I hear it is Lust for Life by Iggy Pop. Um, I just love that song. I just love the the beat to it, The just everything about it just sounds joyous. Even though I realize it's about relatively, uh, you know, um, less than happy uh, way of living, <laughs> um, you know, with the liquor and the drugs and all of that. Um, I still love it, and that that one I just always makes me happy. Another one would be Sweet Jane. Um, there's different versions of it. I I actually like the uh, Velvet Underground version without the. Well, actually, I don't mind the sort of flourishy opening. I like the less produced one. Let me put it that way. Um, and that one actually always makes me happy. And then another one um, that I haven't listened to in a long time, but does make me happy, is Flying by uh, the Beatles. So name a song that's a great fit for when you're in a pensive mood. Lately, that has been um, the song Sometimes by My Bloody Valentine. I just love, love that song. Um, I oftentimes when I'm in what you might call a pensive mood or if I'm thinking about a story or something, I don't necessarily want to uh, listen to the lyrics and have them mean anything. And I like My Bloody Valentine for that reason, because you can't really quite hear the lyrics. And so um, I like that. I appreciate that. <laughs> um, if I have to, you know, if it, if it is a song where I can hear the lyrics, I don't, I like it if they don't really mean anything. So like a lot of Beatles songs, uh, later Beatles songs are like that, where the lyrics don't really mean anything, um, despite what a lot of people think. Or, um, I don't know, there are, there are uh, songs out there that I really like, uh, like Under the Pressure by The War on Drugs, which is another one where you can hear the lyrics, but they don't really sound like they mean anything. And so I like that when I'm thinking about things. Or... Um, Ceremony by, um, ah, the name is escaping me, by Joy Division is another one where you can't quite make out the lyrics. And so you don't really have to pay attention to what's being said in the lyrics. I, I like that for songs, especially when I want to think about stuff, but I want to have music. Um, a song that changed your music taste, uh, your taste in music. Well, boy, um, I mean, I got into punk rock in the 80s, the early 80s, and I don't really know if there was a specific song that I heard that really won me over. I mean, I know The Clash was on the radio um, in South Florida with um, Should I Stay or Should I Go and Rock the Casbah, and I actually think Radio Clash um, was on the radio as well sometimes down there. I don't really remember. Um, you know, it depends on when, like, uh, I, as a kid, you know, I discovered the Beatles and became a huge uh, fan of the Beatles. I uh, can't remember which song specifically won me over there with punk rock. Could have been The Clash. I had a friend who was more adventurous and um, was more sophisticated when it came to music and trying out, listening to different things. And he was the one who sort of introduced me, I think, to uh, the punk rock that you couldn't hear on the radio, which was a limited, you know, um, limited selection available on the radio. And I think what it was that he, he brought a, he brought a 45 and it was a locally made, um, 45 by a local band called Broken Talent. And 
the song was My God Can Beat Up Your God. And I don't know, I just loved it. <laughs> um, and I don't think they ever, I, I actually looked them up online recently and read it, uh, 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 an essay, a reminiscence by one of the guys uh, in the band talking about what it was like being in Broken Talent. This would have been around the time that when they were doing it with other, like Roach Motel was a big punk band in Gainesville, Florida, and Hated Youth was a big punk band in Tallahassee. And so this would have been the early stages of punk in Florida, I think. Um, and then things really blew up, uh, you know, as we went into the 80s uh, in Florida, especially for me uh, in Gainesville, Florida, with all the bands that were around there. Um, but yeah, that might have been, if I'm going to peg, you know, if I'm going to, if I'm going to, talk about something that really changed my taste in music and really got me interested and in, into punk rock. I'm going to go with, uh, with my God can beat up your God by broken talent. <laughs> um, and I think I can, I think it's available on video uh, on YouTube. I will look that up and post a link. Um, it does have some, uh, some bad language in it. So just be aware of that if you do listen to it. Um, Name a recent song that you've discovered and loved. Well, recent is uh, <laughs> recent is a, sub a subjective term, I think. Um, I would say that, uh, boy, uh, let me think here. Young Blood by The Naked and the Famous. Uh, I don't know how recent anybody would consider that. It's recent for me. Um, that's one. Space Song by Beach House is another one that I would call recent myself. Um, let me think. Um, Lazy Eye by the Silver Sun Pickups. Again, probably 20 years old, but fairly recent <laughs> um, to me compared to the 80s, right? Um, think, what else? I mean, th those kinds of music. Uh, songs by Metric, I've discovered fairly recently. really like those. Um, Group Love is another band I've discovered some songs by I really like. Um, I don't know. Any Any... I don't really go after bands anymore. I just go after specific songs. So when I say group love, I mean, I like two of their songs, you know, uh, Beach House, I like Space Song. So, you know, I, I tend to find that when I get the, the, the algorithm that recommends music to me after I listen to something, doesn't doesn't always hit it uh, right on target. And so um, a lot of stuff I try once or twice and then don't bother listening to again. But those are ones that I, I liked a lot that... Um, I really, really love them. Great, you know, those are ones that I discovered recently and really, really love. Um, name three bands or artists that you love. Well, first of all, I'll say the Beatles. Um, I was a huge Beatle maniac back in um, middle school in the 70s and then throughout high school, even in college, once I even got into the punk rock stuff, I still, still really loved the Beatles a lot. And um, I remember... Um, I'm going to do a little name dropping here. Uh, in, in Gainesville, there was the actor River Phoenix lived there and he had his band called Alica's Attic. And I was friends with, uh, the drummer, uh, actually his sister in high school. And so got to know those guys and got to go out to one of their, um, practice sessions, um, out at the, uh, at, at the Phoenix, um, spread in uh, Micanopy and they played, a, they did a cover of Flying by the Beatles. And <laughs> I just, I just liked it so much. I made them play it again. Like after they were done, I was like, hey, wait a minute, play that again. <laughs> um, really love that song. It has no words in it at all, but I love that song. Um, another one, another band or artist that I love, um, you know, yeah, it's, it's hard to say. I mean, I would, I'll go with, uh, my bloody Valentine lately. I really, really like them a lot. Um, I've been listening to them a lot more than I, than I did back, back in the nineties. Um, didn't really listen to them about that, that. Didn't listen to them that much back in the nineties for some reason. Um, and then I'm going to go way off, um, and say, uh, Olivia Newton, John, um, very, very sad when she died recently. And uh, I, you know, uh, her voice, probably one of the best voices, you know, in the history of pop music and uh, love, loved her voice. Didn't always love her songs, uh, but 
I did love a lot of her songs. I mean, you know, um, the only good thing about the movie Xanadu was the soundtrack because <laughs> uh, of her and, and the band ELO, the Electric Light Orchestra. So now those are three that I love. What instrument would you like to be able to play? Well, I, <laughs> um, I did for a while play violin in junior high school and gave it up to uh, go and get into the German uh, language class in middle school because uh, my D&D &D friends are all in that class and uh, I wanted to hang out with them. Probably the stupidest thing I've ever done. Probably should have stuck with, not that there's anything wrong with speaking German, by the way, I, I, I wish I had learned German. Um, but before that, I, you know, had two years of violin. I was actually pretty good. I was um, first chair, second violin at that point. And I kind of wish I had stuck with it. Uh, I, I mean, not kind of, I definitely wish I had stuck with it. Uh, I am now um, pretty good friends with um, a violinist for the Atlanta Symphony Orchestra, and he's been doing it for 30 years. I, I harbor no um, illusions that I would have ever gotten as good as he is, but it would have been nice to at least have gotten competent. Um, I would also enjoy, <laughs> um, I would love to learn how to play the uh, xylophone or um, there are other instruments based that are similar to the xylophone. Uh, I, can't uh, I can't remember what they're called off the top of my head, but one of them is used a lot in jazz. Um, and I do like listening to a lot of jazz, uh, well, certain kinds of jazz, let me let me say. I like I like uh, straight ahead jazz and like acid jazz and uh, hard bop, it's called. I mean, I love all different kinds of jazz, but that for whatever reason, the, the, the idea of playing the xylophone would have been, you know, would have been great um, if I could, could have done that. I joke with my partner because she bought a ukulele and she wanted to learn ukulele. And I was like, well, I'll get a xylophone and then we can form a xylophone ukulele act called Razzmatazz. <laughs> she, she just, she's like, no, no, we're not going to do that. <laughs> um, okay, so yeah, so that, that, you know, and guitar, I suppose, would, it would be nice to learn uh, to know how to play guitar, any any musical instrument, really. Um, clarinet is another one I think would be kind of kind of interesting to, to learn, um, mainly because of the cognitive uh, benefits um, for the brain, and and uh, I probably will eventually uh, pick up an instrument at some point here and start learning it, even if even if I don't get to form a band called Rasmataz with my partner. Um, so anyway, yeah, there's that. And let's see, name a fiction book with music at the center of the narrative. So I was thinking about that. Uh, science fiction would be on wings. On Wings of Song by Thomas Dish. Um, haven't read that in a long time. Not sure if I still have it, honestly, but um, I hope I do because I will probably reread it for my uh, series on the 100 books that best represent 20th century science fiction. But I have two here. Um, this is the anthology In Dreams. I've talked about this before. Um, I have a, a short story in it called Read John Paul Forever, and it's essentially about, it's about a character who um, discovers that the, the you know, world famous, that the world famous singer, uh, musician, Read John Paul, is actually uh, no longer alive and hasn't been alive for a long time, and he burnt himself out and died, and what they've been doing, what management, or what his managers have been doing, or what the record label has been doing, or whatever, They've been finding somebody who looks kind of like him, uh, redo his um, body to make him look just like him, and then give him these drugs that will allow him to sort of lead this sort of rock and roll lifestyle that Reed John Paul was famous for, and the kind of performances that he was famous for, super over the top, energetic, you know, touring endlessly um, type of, of rock star, but he will only have five years to live um, if he agrees to do it. And he thinks about it. His life is crap, basically. I mean, it's not like he's, he's not like living uh, on the streets or anything, but he kind of has this feeling that he, his life is never going to amount to anything. And so he decides, he decides to do it. And then uh, at the very end of the story, um, 
he sort of asked if it was worth it, and he he just kind of smiles before he dies. Um, so that was a that was a this whole anthology is stories that are based on the seven inch single, um, which is pretty cool. Uh, and then I'll also just mention my book, um, God Drug. Uh, the whole novel, it's the narrative doesn't hinge on music, but the literally the the center of the novel is a concert. <laughs> the very middle of the novel uh, with a bunch of local punk rock bands in Gainesville, Florida. And uh, one of the bands, uh, the, the guitar player goes into this long guitar solo and suddenly everyone can fly. And, and obviously that was inspired by On Wings of Song by uh, Dish, um, but it's because they're ta they've all taken this, um, or some of them have taken this, uh, this, this special version of, um, uh, LSD that was created by the government and it has allowed them to affect reality and so they the, the the guitar solo is a very soaring guitar solo and everyone sort of starts to float and then they discover they can fly and then they get attacked by uh, a helicopter that has morphed into a mechanical dragon with a buzzsaw tail um, and that guitar solo was actually based on uh, a friend of mine back in uh, Gainesville at the time uh, this guy Sam who was the lead guitarist with a punk band called the Psychic Violence. And he was actually the drummer in my band, Officer Friendly. <laughs> um, he was a multi-instrumentalist, and you gotta hate that, right? Um, and he, he, had his, he had another band that was all instrumental, and I can't remember the name of it actually, but in, in the underground film Twisted Issues, his... Um, his guitar solo uh, from that band, you know, ends opens the ending credits basically for the the underground movie Twisted Issues, and um, I was thinking of that that guitar solo actually when I wrote when I wrote that part in my novel God Drug. Um, interesting thing about music that changed your taste. I wanted I wanted to go back to that for a second. Um, in South Florida, and I I'm, I'm referring. I'm going to reference MJ at um, Reading This Life when she talked about discovering college radio uh, when she was only in, um, before high school, I guess. Um, it was lucky. She, she lucked out because in South Florida, when I, you know, when I was there in the, in the early 80s and during the 70s, it seemed like you only had stations that played top 40 or the same... 20 or 30 rock bands, you know, you had Rolling Stones, Aerosmith, ACDC, Led Zeppelin, and so on. And occasionally a, a, a song by Blondie would sneak in or something like that. And I, I love those bands, don't get me wrong. I, my first concert was ACDC back in 1983 or 82, somewhere in there. It was the For Those About to Rock tour. Um, I saw Aerosmith in concert back in the 80s. So it's not like I didn't like those bands, but... Um, what changed my taste in music then uh, was I, I had dropped out of college and had attempted, moved back home, was living with my mother. That wasn't really, you know, going great. I left, um, I left there to go to Massachusetts to live with my grandparents. That didn't go well. My grandfather and I did not, did not get along. Loved him, but he was just a hard guy and, um, you know, we just, we just clashed. Uh, and so in anger, <laughs> I walked down to the um, travel agency in downtown Salem, Massachusetts and bought a ticket to a one-way ticket to Los Angeles and then called my mother and said, hey, um, you have a cousin in LA, right? Can, uh, can he pick me up and help me find a place to stay? <laughs> um, so he did. And uh, at this point, I'm maybe 19, I think. Um, and I, I get to LA, her cousin picks me up. He has a friend who's out of town uh, in, stay, in Panorama City <laughs> in the Valley. And he's like, hey, you can stay here. All you gotta do is you know, take care of the dog, feed the dog. His, dog's, his dog is a big German shepherd named Thor. <laughs> um, take care of the dog and, and you can stay here for at least two weeks until we find, find a place for you to stay, until you find a job, whatever. So. Um, so I was staying at that house looking for places to live. I mean, I remember once we drove to a place in Venice, um, and 
it was it was a house that was advertising. I can't remember. How, I can't remember for how much uh, they were asking, but um, they were advertising a room or a bed or something. And we got to the house, and there was a sign. There was a big fence around it, and there was a sign that said, "If you're here about the room, honk the horn thirteen times." <laughs> um, so I, we did. And I, I got the tour of the place, and it was terrible. It, it, it was basically just sheets hanging down from the wall around uh, a mattress, and that would be what you were paying for. Um, and so I didn't do it. Anyway, at this guy's house in Panorama City, I discovered that at least fairly quickly anyway, that the radio stations in Los Angeles seem to be way better than the ones in South Florida. And I was listening to the radio and what came on was um, a Ball of Confusion by Love and Rockets. And it's a, it's a cover song, but it was really good. I kept listening and then they played Jesus and Mary Chain, which I, I was aware, I was familiar with them, but not on the radio. I never really heard them on the radio uh, in Florida. And they played more Love and Rockets. And I was just, I was stunned that by this music that I was sort of aware of, it wasn't punk rock, but it was, I guess you would call it post-punk. Um, and I kind of got, I kind of got sucked into that. Not, when I went back to Gainesville, Florida after that, I, I um, uh, got back more into the punk rock stuff and actually more into bands like uh Butthole Surfers and Scratch Acid and Big Black, I think was another one. Uh, kind of the weird, uh, weird uh, punk rock type stuff. But every now and then I would think about Jesus and Mary Chain. I would, I would go to the used record store and occasionally I would find a, you know, a record by one of these, one of these post-punk bands and really, um, really liked it and still listened to that stuff. And so the only other thing I can say about songs that changed my musical taste would basically be three, they're not really songs, they're not really specific songs, they're movies that had soundtracks that really changed my musical tastes and, or maybe fed into them. And those were Valley Girl, um, Pretty in Pink, and uh, Repo Man. <laughs> and so, you know, I, I find it hard to, I, obviously I'm rambling on as I usually do in these videos, um, I find it hard to just pick one because I think at different times, um, different changes happen uh, in, in your tastes in general, in reading and in music and, you know, everything. So I just wanted to sort of mention that as well about my musical taste changing when I thought about um, uh, MJ's mentioning of finding that college radio station because I wish I had found one in South Florida. There probably was one available. I couldn't find it. The only the closest I came to anything like that was on an AM station. I discovered a station that played um, Suzanne Vega, uh, her song Marlena on the Wall, which was great. And then Enya, um, uh, Sail Away, I think it's called Sail Away, or, or Orinoco Flow or something like that. I can't remember what it's called, but those were songs that back then had, had heard nothing like them heard them on this AM station and really uh, became a huge fan of both of them, actually. So I don't know, um, probably too much, but there you go. Uh, that is my, um, my It's the Song Tag video. And I will try to post some links to some of the songs that I've mentioned if I can find them.